Grammar Fundamentals. Such a pleasure to be with you here today and isn't it exciting that we've been together for a while now and we've learned so much and you knew so much of these Grammar Fundamentals before and this program hopefully has brought you that time to reflect and integrate that all that you know and all that you knew and put it into practice because that's what we're really focused on and that's what we know is that there are many things that we know and when we put it into practice when our intention is to do we're able to do we're able to do so much more and that's what's so exciting with grammar fundamentals that we learn we review and we put it in practice and we practice every day and our English is getting better and better and better every single day and isn't it wonderful to notice those changes and to be able to notice that transformation. Such a pleasure today to be here to talk about the past perfect. We talked about many of the other fundamental grammar uh, tenses. And today we're talking about the past perfect. Maybe you've heard of the past perfect before and you've studied it before, but, and today, we're gonna talk about it again and bring it into practice. So, as always, let's start with our why. Why is the past perfect important? And why do we use it? The past perfect in English, we use in the past, but we use it for things in the past that happened before other things in the past. So we use it because of that and also to emphasize when one thing in the past started before something else in the past. So for example, I organized this class. I had thought about everything I was going to say to you before I started talking. I had thought about what we learned before, before we started this class. You had learned many things before you started doing Grammar Fundamentals. Yeah? Something happened before something else in the past. Now, let's look at how we do this past perfect. So this is also very important that we talk about the key components. So how do we create the past perfect? Well, we're talking about the past. So here we use the past of have. We use had and the past participle that we've used at other times, specifically the present perfect. So the great thing about the past perfect is that it's the same for everyone. I, you, he, she, it, we, they are all had. Yeah? So all we do is put the had and the past participle. Let's look at some examples. I had spoken with them before we met last week. You had learned about this before you turned on this video. She'd studied English for many years before she started really speaking. He'd learned a lot of grammar before he started using it. We'd talked about many things before we started really doing them. They'd done it many times already. Make sense? 
awesome. As always, <laughs> time is money. As we say, time is money. And there is a way to make the past perfect shorter, to make it maybe a little simpler and make it quicker to say. So what do we do? Instead of saying, I had, I say, I. Instead of saying, you had, you. He had, he. You ha she had, she. We had, we. They had, they. Yeah? So, I'd gone there before. You'd studied this before. She'd worked on her English for many years already. We'd practiced this before. They'd thought about it already. Yeah? Wonderful. Let's move on. Let's talk about an important trip. Now, it's not that we don't use the past perfect. We do. We use the past perfect when we talk about things in the past that happened before things in the past. But we also, when we're in less formal conversation, we often just use the simple past. And we use words like before and already to signal that something happened before or already. So of course we can say, I'd studied that before I studied this. But it's also common, pay attention, listen. In common conversation, we often just say, I studied that before I studied this. What's the difference? Maybe it's simpler, it's less grammatically complex, and it's something common that we do in regular conversation. So try it out, which is easier for you. Use that. You can use the past perfect, but you can also use the words to signal that something happened in the past before something else. Now, of course, if you want to make it very clear, use the past perfect. One side note that we didn't say before, in time is money is that apostrophe D we also use for other things. And you've probably heard, I'd like to do that. I'd like to do that means I would like to do that versus I'd gone there before. I had gone there before. How do you know the difference when the apostrophe D means would or means had? Context. So listen you're gonna hear she'd studied a lot before she went to the university in this case had she'd love to have an ice cream would yeah again this apostrophe D like the apostrophe s can have many meanings so we need to listen to the whole sentence when someone's talking to know exactly what they want to say. Well, with that, those are the basics. Those are the fundamentals of the past perfect. And what's the most important step for us to take? Practice, 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 practice. That's always the key. The most important thing for us to do is to take grammar out of the mind and make it part of our life. And how do we do that? We practice. So let's look at a couple ways that we can practice and put it in to your daily life. So let's try these three things to practice. Are you ready? Number one, just say it. Go ahead and record yourself talking about things that you did before. For example, I had studied before I came to Brazil. I had studied Spanish before I started learning Portuguese. You'd studied lots of English before you turned on this video. You'd heard lots of English before in your life, before you heard me speak. Practice, 
use it. Okay? Cool. Number two, say things that happened before other things. Go ahead and think of some situations in your life and just practice that. It had rained before it stopped raining. It, the sun had come up before the sun had gone down. The sun had come up before it was noon. The sun had also set before we had dinner. For example, go ahead and practice those. And number three is just practice. Practice using the simple past instead of the past perfect. And use the past perfect with the simple past. See what works best for you. See how that works. Practice using the apostrophe D and practice using had. See what works best for you. Practice those differences and see what works best for you. That's always the key. We can do many things. We can know many things. But we have to put them into practice to see what works best for us. So number three is to try these different tips and see what works best for you, what's most natural for you, and try a couple others and see if it sounds better to you as well. And with that, well, I hope that made sense. I hope that made the past perfect simpler for you. I hope you can see that it is simple, like everything. We can understand it and we really start internalizing it and integrating it when we use it. So I encourage you this week to practice the past perfect as much as possible and to use it in your daily life. As always, it's an enormous pleasure to talk with you and to spend this time with you. And as always, thank you so much for being here with me today. I hope you have a wonderful day. All of the very best this world has to offer you. Much light, much love. Until next time. Ciao, ciao.